grow any further. But it, as the bones grow, they'll stretch those nerves out. Okay? And you'll, we'll, you'll learn about this when we get into the nerves and we talk, talk about it. But why do I talk about this now? Why am I talking about neuralation now? Ah, because for me to properly form my spinal column, I need to have my spinal cord present from the initial onset. Did everybody hear me? So if I have a problem with my vertebral column, so there are kids that are born that they'll have a patch of skin on their back that has hair. It looks like, you know, you ever see those, those jackets, those old school prep, prep school jackets that got the suede patches on them? It looks like that. They'll have a skin, dark pigmented skin layer, round, with hair on it. And that's an indicator of spina bifida. Well, spina bifida, guys, is actually when you have issues with the closure of the bone, then the nerve, then the, then the, sorry, then the spinal cord never sits in its proper place. And if it doesn't sit in its proper place, then it can be outside where it needs to be, and that can cause damage to the spinal cord itself and to the function of the spinal cord. The, the best case scenario is if they just had that hair, patch of hair, and, the, and this part didn't develop, this part here, the lamina, didn't develop, but the spinal cord is there. And what happens is you get a patch of skin over the top for some strange reason, because it's just how it is. They can operate it, but it doesn't cause them any problems other than the weird, the weird thought that they have this patch of skin. You know, it's like it looks like a patch of turf. It's just like glued onto their back. They're self-conscious, but as long as you know, whatever. Now, if it's really bad, they can be paralyzed from the waist down. They can be paralyzed depending on where it happens. So again, I need the neural tube to be in place for me to create a vertebral column. You got me, guys. And if my neural tube is not in place properly, or if my vertebral column doesn't close properly, then my neural tube could be shifted out of place. And that's where this whole spina bifida comes in, and, and different degrees of spina bifida. We'll talk more about it when we get to the, the story again, because you'll hear me say this again. The reason why I mention it now, guys, is because why? The formation of the vertebral column is directly entwined. They're directly correlated and related to the development of the brain and spinal cord, okay? So not so much for the brain, because remember, with the brain, we have the skull. But for the rest of the neural tube, which would be the spinal cord, you need your vertebral column to be there, and it needs to be there from the very onset. It's the notochord that calls on the ectoderm. Everyone agree? It's the notochord, the mesoderm. It means the derm, but ectoderm, what's up, ectoderm? Not the man, chill. Did you make that notochord? Yeah, man, it's right here, you don't see? Bet. Let me make my neural plate, my neural tube, create the neural tube. Comes down, now you got neural tube on top of neural. You got neural tube on top of notochord. Everybody got me? Straight down the midline of the disc. Of the disc. Of the three layer disc. Because that's what we're talking about. The three layer disc. Guys, we're not even embryo yet. Y'all hear me? We haven't even gotten there yet. We're not there yet. There's other things that have to occur first for us to get the embryo. All within eight weeks. I'm telling you it's a damn miracle. Did I tell you before it's a damn miracle? It's a damn miracle. To think that more of us are not born on this earth. Because man, this is just complicated. Something go wrong real quick. Alright? Any questions on this? Also on the video, I'm gonna erase it now. Alright, All right, so understanding this idea, guys. Uh, race all this other stuff is this idea that, that every vertebra now watch me every vertebra has a vertebral body yes other than what c1 yes because there's c2 there's c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 look at c7 look at that big old process sticking out of there and then look see here transverse processes so watch Every, every vertebra has a pedicle. Not every vertebra has a, a body, because C1 does not have a body. Every vertebra has a transverse process. Every, verte every vertebra has a lamina, and every vertebra has a spinous process. Did everybody see that? Cervical vertebra are the only ones that have a hole in their transverse processes. So the moment you see that, that's cervical. 
You already got me? Separately, the vertebral bodies are small and rectangular. Take a look at them. You can come up here and take a look at them. Rectangular, 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 rectangular. They're more rectangular than they are round. Take a look. Tell me that that's round. Does that look round to you? That, this doesn't look round to me, does it? It doesn't look round to me. Doesn't look round to me at all, does it? And then look, the, is it flat? Uh uh. It's got these uncinate processes on it. Eh? So, transverse processes with transverse foramen, rectangular small vertebrae bodies. Automatically, I know I'm looking at the cervical vertebrae. Everybody understand? Now, cervical. Any questions? Now watch this. How do I know thoracics are cervicals? So here's cervical. And that's going to be cervical 3 through 7 because 2 would have this big old dent sticking out of it and it have even, it'd have even smaller bonds. Kind of rectangular looking with that dent. There's C2. C1. C1. Everybody see that? You guys should be able to do this. C1, C2, C3. Boom. Then, cervical. All right. Then, thoracic. Well, thoracic, what do we say? The vertebral bodies are getting bigger, right? So, medium sized. Vertebral body. Still have pedicles. You see that? Still have transverse processes. Still have lamina. Still have spinous processes. Everybody see that? So how do I know? Oh, look at the bodies of the vertebrae. Separately. Notice that, remember the drawing on my cervicals? The transverse process was broad with a hole in it? Well, that, that, if you, I'll draw it. Looks like this. I'll draw a cervical. It's just, just it's kind of small. <clears throat> so everybody take a look at this. See that right there? They call that the anterior element of the transverse process of cervicals. What do you think that's going to be in thoracics? What do you think that part right there is going to be? It's a bone. What bone is associated with thoracics? It's not associated with any other vertebra. Ribs. See that? So this little piece right there, we just separated it out and tuned it up and made it the rib. How do you like that? And in the lumbars, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna fuse them together and make it nice and fat. Look how fat they are. Look at this. Look at that, look how fat they are. I can put, my, I can put both of my fingertips over the tops of these. These things are huge. Right there, look at them, look how big they are. And then look at the bodies of the vertebrae. See how they're getting large? See how I'm going from medium to large? See that? Because there's more weight. So I went from small to medium in the thoracics with ribs. Huh? They all have transverse processes, yes. They all have pedicles, yes. They all have superior and inferior articulating surfaces and processes, yes. Does everybody see? Some things they all share alike, so why memorize everything they share alike? No, you memorize what makes them different. It's easier that way, it's quicker. Study smart, not harder. All right, study smarter, not harder. So that's thoracic, there's cervical now, right here. Look at lumbar, right, look at lumbar. Big old large vertebral bodies, large sized bodies. Right? Large pedicles, large transverse processes. Large spinous, large and broad spinous processes. Huh? Don't believe me. Come look at this. Look at that right there. Look at that big old fat knob right there. Guys, these are nothing more than levers for muscle. You have muscles coming from here, 
that are extending up and they're attaching not only to these processes, the transverse processes, but to the ribs, going all the way up to here. All of those muscles are, re are referred to as erector spinning muscles. There's bigger ones and smaller ones and they're all grouped together. Several groups. Superficial, kind of deep and then deeper muscle groups. And all of them are meant to move the, the, the vertebral column as a unit. Okay, and so all these processes, guys, are, are levers. So they're meant, the, bone, the muscles meant to move it, as you can see, to shift it, to, to, to twist it, to side bend, see? Side bend, rotate, yeah? Extension, flexion. All right, see? So when you, 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 you think about it, see, you know, there's a little bit of limited movement there. But, but when I go to turn my head, I got I got this little movement plus that 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 little, movement, which allows me to turn my head like this, or like this, or like this, like this. Everybody see? So it's so those small degrees that exist, the movement that exists between each of the vertebrae that aid up in allowing us to flex and extend our entire vertebral column. And it's the idea that we have, we that we created this nodal cord. To what? To chop it up, yes? To segment it. To make vertebral body, intervertebral disc. 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 Until we get to what? Sacrum. Alright? Because look, lumbar. One through five, thoracic. One through twelve with ribs, and then don't forget, of course, the rib never touches the sternum. It comes forward. Sternum is here, and of course, what are we going to find in between them? Costal cartilage, also known as island cartilage. As easy as that, right? What is that? So your your chest could. Compress a little? Yeah, yeah, because you got, look, even with it wired, watch this. See that? See, yeah. see even though it's even though it's wired, you see that move see that movement? Yeah. That movement upward and then downward. Upward and downward. See that? Upward and downward. See that? Upward and downward. That's inspiration expiration. And the joints in the back, the where the these joints, where the head of the rib and the tubercle of the rib. Meet the transverse, notice the head of the rib doesn't go to the tubercle. The head of the rib goes to the body of the vertebra. Everybody see that? The head of the rib associates with the body of the vertebra. This is the head of the rib. This is the tubercle of the rib. So there's movement there. There's hyaline, sure enough, guys, when you go and you look in there, it's bone opposing bone. Guess what? Hyaline cartilage opposing hyaline cartilage with a synovial membrane and synovial fluid, synovial joint with ligaments on the outside, reinforcing it with tendons and then ah, see it. Yeah, get me? How did I tell you? See, there's a method to my madness. I know I'm crazy. Look, same thing there. So now you see how the ribs can actually move up and down. And you're not, and we're not even thinking about this. Well, guys. This is does that also protect you? Not protect you, but help you from blood forces. It can, but the the weakest part is see right here. That's the weakest part right there. Like that angle. If I punch right there, I can break the rib, and if I break the rib, I can puncture the lung. This is one of the reasons why boxers target this area because legally you can. Right. Right. If you can turn the boxer to his side and hit him on this side here, you can do massive damage. And, and once you break this, then this, this, this is just sitting there and this is moving up and down now, or twisting. And then you pinch the, then you pinch the lung, then you get a collapsed lung. What you can't do is you can't hit in the back of the head. Yeah. Right? It disqualifies you when you hit somebody in the back of the head as a boxer. You lose your, you lose your ability to fight in that state. Well, I thought you also not let hit their spine period. Turned yeah, well, you know, you, you can't hit them. You can't hit them from the back, but you can't hit them in the back of the head either, because you you see this, you see the slaps, mm -hmm. you see them get away with it, and they get yeah, caught on it. They'll take points away, but if you get a, if you get a clean shot to the back of the head, and you take it, you'll be disqualified. As a boxer, you can't. You're not allowed to do that. 
How does the cartilage generate? How does the cartilage? It takes time, and then it's kind of the same idea. So you have, if you look at cartilage, you have the borders that they call the perichondrium. And on those borders of the perichondrium, there's the connective tissue. You have those cells that are called chondroblasts. And those chondroblasts are highly potent, and they leave that area of the perichondrium. They migrate to the midline of the cartilage, or wherever they're at. And as they migrate, they're secreting a whole bunch of stuff. And, and that's actually pushing... The, the perichondrium, opposing perichondrium is a part. And, and that's how we that's how we'll regenerate. So they, they leave the perichondrium and migrate midline and, and, during, and while they're in that process, they're producing large amounts of extracellular matrix that they get trapped in. That's why they go from being osteo, I mean, uh, chondroblasts to chondrocytes. And then those chondrocytes can be broken down and then replaced with new chondrocytes as those chondroblasts migrate off the perichondrium and towards the midline of that cartilage. So this is basically any cartilage. So you can bruise that cartilage, and then your body will heal it. Um, that has happened to me one day. I was uh, I used to work in, in, in the Grove teaching high school students chemistry, uh, uh, Arts and Minds College over there. Arts and Minds, is, they closed it down since. But uh, one day I was coming across where the vet is on McDonald Way, which is, does it got, it does, you know, Coconut Grove gets CBS name. So I was coming across, and this guy, you know, he had he had a red light. He was supposed to stop. Of course, he wanted to make that right. So what did he do? He went right through. And um, luckily, he I avoided getting hit by him. But to avoid getting hit by him, I had to turn around. Uh, I had to take my eye off where I was going in front, and then shut up. I ran right into a into a pole. So I, I kind of moved the bike just ever so slightly so that the bike wouldn't hit. But then. The handlebars hit, and then my whole body went forward, and my chest bounced off the pole. So afterwards, it hurt. You know, like I was having a heart attack. So I went, I went to the, I went to the urgent care and said, "Yeah, give me an EKG just to make sure I'm not having a heart attack, right? Because my chest hurt a lot." Now I've had this happen before when I, when I, I used my, my motorcycle as a surfboard and tried to jump off of it so I wouldn't fall into the canal in the middle of the night because I don't know what's in the canal in the middle of the night in Homestead. So I'll take my chances bouncing off the ground. <laughs> So I laid my bike down as a surfboard and it just kind of jumped off of it and bounced off the ground. And that took about four months of recovery. Um, the first month was me just barely breathing. Because every time I would breathe in, I would start crying and yelping like a dog. Because that's how much it hurt. So yeah, you definitely, this is always moving, guys. It's always moving up and down, up and down. And if it doesn't move up and down, it's being sustained from moving down. So it's being sustained up while the diaphragm contracts. So no, do you, no more do you realize this is when you injure yourself like I did, right? And then realize that your ribcage is really alive and moving and you're trying not to move, but your ribcage is constantly moving. So it, it's this constant hurt. It, it's very painful. Like what, every time you breathe out? Yeah, yeah like every yeah. time, even when you're not breathing. Well, like, even when you're not breathing, even when you're trying not to breathe, it still hurts. So you try to breathe shallow, and it still hurts because the root cage is always going to move the moment you breathe in, no matter how shallow you breathe yeah, in. Right? So it's very, very painful. It's extreme. Can imagine being cold. Yeah, it's just, it's no, it's it's like it's like, it's like being. Have so you ever been punched once in the solar plexus? Yes. What? So imagine being punched like that regularly every time you breathe in. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That sounds That's, it sounds very painful. It's extremely painful. So you'll breathe in and, you, and you'll be like, oh, I feel good enough breathe in. And when you breathe in, oh, no, 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 no so they limit you, they bind the chest wall to limit you, and then you're laid up. You just kind of recover. But luckily, bones, like I said, six to eight weeks, a bone will heal. You break a rib, very painful. Break a rib, six to eight weeks to heal. All right? Any bone, six to eight weeks, unless something's wrong with you. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. What if it does take longer? If something's wrong with you. <laughs> but, okay, like that's scenario-wise, what would possibly be wrong with the person? Vitamin D, mm -hmm. PTH, calcitonin, yeah. osteoblast, yeah. osteoclast, any and all. Yeah. That's what you should be thinking about. Like the kid who was playing basketball and he ran into the other kid last year and he broke his leg. Uh, not normal. Something's wrong. That's not normal. That he got up and he had a bruise 
or a hematoma and he couldn't walk, but that he clean broke his leg in the middle of a basketball, that's not normal. I can tell you because I played basketball for years. I never broke my leg playing basketball. That is not normal. Of course, you know, they can't say that, that he's abnormal because that's a violation of HIPAA policy. Mm -hmm. Right, so nobody could talk about his birth, you know, even though they had it on national TV, nobody could say, oh, well, the kid has this particular disease, but I can guarantee you he's got some kind of disease. Right? And there are lots of diseases. All right, one of them is mentioned in your book. What's, what is that one? The one where you get haphazard arrangement of bone. Oh, I just answered the question. I was going to remember the name. What's the name of it? Um, it's in your textbook. The haphazard arrangement of bone. What's that? Paget's disease. Paget's. The haphazard arrangement of bone. So not only do I have to have the right amount of collagen and the right amount of calcium, it better be laying properly. Does that make sense? If you don't lay it properly, then it's at risk for breaking. I told you this is not easy stuff. It's not. But I, again, I try to make it simple for you. Which was the disease that affected the shoulders and the teeth? Uh, no, it didn't affect the shoulders, the shoulders and the teeth. That's what I. That's what I thought I read when I was doing the homework. It said because um, shoulders and teeth, where their shoulders literally like kind of push in towards the middle. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. Yeah, I don't know. I there's nothing. That, I mean, like when they're born, it just doesn't form properly right away. Oh, so yeah, I'd have to look. I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those rare ones. But the one that's really rare that again I have a, a case. Uh, a student who contacted me was because again this osteogenesis imperfecta, this genetic anomaly very rare condition where the bones are broken uh, in young kids who would, you know, most healthcare workers would assume are being beaten, but they're not being beaten by their parents. They have multiple breaks and they have this disease. The one little girl that I knew that had the issue with her teeth, her teeth were all black. Oh, all black. The ontogen they call it ontogenesis imperfecta. That's a form of this osteogenesis imperfecta, just not affecting bones, just affecting teeth. Okay, it's called ontogenesis. And it cracks bones. It may, makes the bones weak, and the bones can break on their own. Yeah, they become they become breakable. That's what the movie's about. So there's a movie where Samuel L. Jackson plays this kid who grows up with disease, and you don't you don't learn about him and his disease or anything else. What you learn about is Bruce Willis, because it seems like every time this guy gets into an accident, he somehow miraculously survives when everybody else dies. And so it's the movie's called Unbreakable. It winds up being that Samuel L. Jackson is his antithesis, his his villain, his arch villain. And he's the kid as a kid, he's caught up in the comic book. So he's like, well, if, if I'm weak, then there's gotta be somebody who's strong. So let me figure out how I can find this person so we can meet each other and kind of, you know, it's really weird, but sure enough, there are, I mean, are there are there people who don't break bones? People who have good, you know, good calcium, good bone structure genetically, that they don't break any bones, even though they've been in multiple locks and something. Yeah, sure. But I can tell you that I don't care how strong you, you think your bone is, I can put you to an accident where you'll break the bone, right? hundred percent. So it's there's 100%. nobody who's unbreakable in that in that, right? Um, but there are people who are extremely delicate and breakable, which is those osteogenesis and perfected kids. Right? They run, they trip, they fall, they break their bone. It's just not normal. When you said the guy ran into someone else and broke his leg. He literally clean snapped his leg. Like they had the whole thing. You like, just look it up. Like ESPN turned into an angle place? Though? Yeah. Like he snapped, clean snapped the leg. Were they like sprinting at each other? No. The one guy was I uh, stagnant. He was going up for a layup and he just snapped his leg. Just, his lower leg, his tibia just snapped in half. Sound like that's terminal. Because I know, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's got to be, he's got some form of osteogenesis imperfecta, or he's got some issue with hormone, or he's got some issue with his cells. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so get, get what I'm saying? That is not normal. You can look it up on ESPN. ESPN's got it. Just type in the you know college kid who broke his leg playing basketball. Oh. And I'm sure it'll come right up. You saw that. It was nasty. It was absolutely nasty. And it, and, and it wasn't for, you know, it wasn't like it was some major collision that would have broken his leg. It wasn't. No, he just went up for a jump shot. Yeah, he went up for a jump shot and his leg just snapped. It, I don't even think he ran into anybody. No. I don't think he ran into anybody. When he landed, it just popped out of the machine. Yeah, it was just, it was really weird. So, all right. You okay? <laughs> you're looking like you're about to throw up. No, I was going, okay, okay. I don't want to get you sick. All right. Guys? Oh, you watching the video? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's quite strange to watch that video. Yeah, it's slow, so it's pretty bad. All right. <laughs> so, guys, even these processes that are in the vertebra, above and below the superior and inferiors, there's hyaline cartilage with synovial fluid in the synovial membrane. So you got those synovial joints everywhere here, all the way down the vertebral column, guys. You see that? Yeah, you see it's pretty bad. Damn. Yeah, that's not normal. That break is not normal. I didn't tell you that right now. By, by any means. By any means. Now, little kids, when little kids break, oh, they're... So this is, we can talk about fractures. Let's talk about fractures. So when you break bone, that's when it really snaps, right? Normally, yeah, that's, that's a clean break. This is the most common fracture, green stick fractures. Just like, a, anybody ever break a green stick? Uh, I don't know green stick specifically, but I've got fractures. Right, but when you go to break, when you go get a limb, I mean a, a branch off of, off of a, 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 a living tree, and it's a green living tree, and you try to break that green branch. It's not gonna just clean come off. It's, it's gonna not gonna snap. Right. It's not gonna, you're not gonna clean snap it like you like you can do with a milk bone, right? Like my, my puppy's milk bones, we can break them in half and just toss them in there, half of one or whatever. Doesn't snap like that. When you go to snap that that that, that green stick fractures, or the, the bone snaps and it and it, and it looks like it we snap like that. Or the opposite way. So it won't be a complete, it won't be complete. So it crack and bend. It cracks and bends, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's not clean. It's not a clean, clean break. Like this guy's, that's just not normal, man. That clean break like that is just not normal. And I don't even think he ran into anybody. He wants to close out. Yeah. And then, and it's just, just the force and that's just not normal. I mean, it's not normal. No, nah, because even if he lands out on his ankle, his ankle is not normal. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just not normal. It's just not normal. And then I was looking to see if they had said anything nationally about him, but obviously I, I figured, oh, they're not going to say anything because yeah, it's not. HIPAA violations. But, I mean, it's clear. This kid's got – he's got a problem. How does he get through how, – how, do how does he get through the pediatrician who's supposed to see him and take care of him and, and never figured out that this kid had this problem? He had, like, severe shin splints. That's what they said. Oh, that's what they said. The micro shin splints. Yeah, that's, but he would still play through it. Yeah. I mean, something's wrong, man. Shin splints is pretty bad. Yeah, but something's it's wrong, man. Bad. You got that many shin splints that you can break your bone that quickly. That's not normal. I mean, he wouldn't have been running around. I've had shin splints that if you just poke it, I'm falling yeah. back for it. So I don't even know how he was running. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's just not normal. It's just not normal. Yeah. So, so here's what happens, guys. That's a green stick fracture. Now, a clean break. A clean break. So this would be a clean break. And it doesn't break the skin. They call that simple. Simple fracture. Yeah. So when you break the bone, but you don't break the skin, that's called a simple fracture. When you break the bone and the bone breaks the skin, it means the bone is fractured and it splinters and it comes out from the skin. Now you got issues. You got any gram? Right. You got issues. You got issues even if you break it. One of the biggest issues is the seepage of yellow fat. Okay. This is that clinical scenario I gave you guys about a seven, eight year old kid who's playing around and he breaks his leg, right? And it hurts. He kind of plays it off. He's afraid to sell it, tell anything to his parents. He goes home and it gets worse and he realizes he's got to say something, he tells his mom. So it's like maybe about eight, eight to ten hours after the incident, they take him to the hospital, they set it, fine, they send him home. Next thing you know, in the morning, the parents are back and the kid's crashing and he dies. Because you get the yellow fat seeps out into the bloodstream and causes a yellow, I mean a fat embolism. So yellow fat in the bloodstream leads to a, a fat embolism. So this is why breaks are so important. This is why you go to the hospital immediately if you suspect a break and you set the fracture. You get, get the leading edges as close as you can and put it in a cast. If you got the pins on it, put pins in it because you don't want excess yellow fat seeping out. You lead to a fat embolism. This, this causes uh, pulmonary failure. The fat embolism will go to the lung and it will cause a saddle embolism and it will kill you. 
Yeah, you have a heart attack, you have a heart attack. Can this be detected? No, it can't. And it, but what happens is if they break and they wait, they increase risk for it. Okay? So we remember we got yellow fat in there. So whether it's simple or compound, if it's compound, it's, it's, it's a break, it's a clean break with skin puncture. Without skin puncture, clean break. Without skin puncture, okay. That's simple. You still run the risk of yellow fat moving out, guys. Whether it's simple or compounded, you got me. Now, that's a clean break. Clean break. Well, what happens if it's a commutative break? Anybody? Oh, I had a bunch. A commutative break. So simple, there's compound, then there's commutative breaks, where this is what happened to one of my toes, in motor, another motorcycle accident. The bone breaks, and it breaks into pieces. This also can lead to fat embolism. There was a guy, a taxi cab driver, that was taken by the US military in Afghanistan because they were told they were told by the local militia that he was a terrorist. They took him and they beat him regularly until they pulverized his bones. Because they used to hit him regularly, They'd come in and hit him with the butt of their M16. So they hit him hard. They they literally broke the bones in his leg. So he winded up dying. Come to find out he wasn't a terrorist at all. The real terrorists were the guys who ratted on him to the US government, to the US military. They made a movie about him on HBO because he was just a taxi cab driver who was trying to make an honest day's work when he got taken in by the US military. And to this day, the US military has yet to pay his wife and his children what he deserves, all right? What, 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 or what they deserve from them having to take his life by accident. Um, they, they did not admit to the fact that they caused his death because they broke his bones. This is why torture to, to that extreme is unjustified. Right? It's, it's, it's homicide. It's, right? They killed the guy. And this can happen. So you need to be careful. Yeah. Community of fracture is not good. Not good at all. Very dangerous. All right? Any questions so far? So we've gone through the vertebra. Finish up, the sacrums are fused. Sacrums are five vertebrae, they're fused. All right, so we talked about the fractures and whatnot, talked about the vertebrae. When you look at the sacrum, it's a triangle. And you got your coccyx down below, they fuse, that's your tail. So that's your coccyx. Your tail bones. This hurts. I know of a person who got in an accident. She was my lab partner in 2086 years ago. She got she had she had had an accident. She had broken uh, the these vertebrae had been dislocated, and because of that, she got she got divorced from her husband because she could not have normal sexual relations. Because when those bones get affected, then that the whole area there it. The nerves, in her case, the nerves got affected because the bones got broken. And the nerves get affected, then that area there, it becomes uh, the, the tension in that muscle sling that's there, because there's a muscle sling here. It gets too tight for the introduction of penis and coitus. So they can't, she couldn't, because it was painful. So you imagine, guys, how associated all these structures really are. It's very important that you be careful. I see kids all the time on skateboards, girls and boys. Maybe be careful, because I tell you, I don't know of any better way to break a tailbone than on a skateboard or on rollerblades or on even on bicycle if you're doing tricks and stuff. You may be careful, right? You go up, you do a trick on there, you come back down, the seat pole hits you right now, you break that. And you get some serious dysfunction for men. What's well, more important than having an erection, right? I'm serious, right? Every old guy I've come in complaining, not because they can't urinate, because they can't get an erection. It, not because they can't urinate, it's because they can't get the erection. That's why they're coming in to see you. So you give them a little blue pill. 
in reality, they, they should be more concerned with the he laughing because he knows it's true. Prosthetic, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. But they're not concerned about the urine, the urine flow. They're worried about not being able to have the orgasm, right? Or not being able to have the erection. It's like, seriously? That's the least of your worries, man. Let's get you back to normal function. Let's get you urinating again. No, 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 I want the heart on. Not the urine, I want the heart on. <laughs> oh, what's up with the heart on, right? So anyway. <laughs> so guys, go over this stuff, right? Um, so let's see, Thursday's your exam next week. So Tuesday, we'll go over... Uh, we'll go over joints. Yeah. Not everything that's in chapter 8 you'll need to know. You should not uh, just the stuff on snowmobile joints. Just all the stuff on snowmobile joints.